Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Advanced Topics. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about a compiler optimization called strength reduction. So strength reduction is an optimization where your compiler tries to replace expensive operations with less expensive ones while maintaining the same um, functionality. So let's take a look at a few examples here. So one very expensive operation is say division. So let's look at a few ways that your compiler may synthesize, you know, an IDIV instruction out of say adds and shifts um, and, you know, bitwise operations. So let's first take a look at a very simple function called is odd. So uh, with is odd, we're just going to take in an integer value and return whether or not that value is odd or even. Now, the very obvious way we'd implement this is say by you know, dividing the number by two and seeing if we have a remainder or not. So we can do that with very simply with the modulo operator, which usually will just give us an idiv instruction. So we can return val mod two in order to implement this function. But we see on the right-hand side, we don't get an idiv instruction because our compiler is pretty clever here. So it knows that it can reduce this, you know, you know, what normally we would think of as being a division or an idiv instruction here when we're doing mod, uh, modulo with just a bitwise and operation because our compiler knows that, you know, to figure out if a number is odd or not, all we really need to do is check the least significant bit of val, right? So this is strength reduction, replacing, say, an expensive modulo operation with just a bitwise and operation by anding our input value with one. So let's take a look at another example of how our compiler may you know, try to help us out with things like expensive division operations. So let's generalize this a little bit more. So let's just write a remainder function. It'll take some integer value and all it will do is return, say our input value mod some number, right? So it will just give us the remainder of our value mod some number. So you know, we can put really any value here. So something like you know, 4,392, it doesn't really matter. But you see, again, our compiler doesn't give us the expensive division operation. It finds kind of a clever way to synthesize modulo out of things like integer multiplication, shifts, subtraction, more multiplication, more subtraction, um, etc. Right, so this is again, you know, a case of strength reduction here. We're avoiding very expensive, you know, instructions such as IDIV, but synthesizing the same result and the same functionality using cheaper instructions. So things like multiplication and shifts. And you can see this isn't, this also isn't anything special about say 4392. So you can replace this with, you know, 191 or, you know, 321. It doesn't really matter here. We get, you know, the same effect, you know, more or less on the right hand side here. So, you know, different combinations of immediate values, um, you know, ordering of shifts and multiplies and uh, subtracts, maybe different adds, maybe it'll use a load effective address for some values. But in essence, you know, the idea is the same, right? We're avoiding doing expensive IDIV instruction by replacing it with much cheaper, you know, ar uh, arithmetic instructions like shifts and multiplies. But there may be cases where our compiler can't say, uh, do strength reduction, say if it doesn't know the value ahead of time. So if we replace, you know, 321 in this case with a runtime value, say another input parameter val2, now our compiler kind of has to do this idiv instruction here in order to do the mod, uh, modulo. And that's because, you know, the compiler doesn't know what we're doing modulo by, so it, you know, it can't ahead of time, you know, prepare some sort of, you know, bit twiddling hack or, you know, use of, clever use of multiplies and adds and shifts in bitwise operators in order to synthesize the modulo. Right, it has to handle the case where val2 could really be anything. So what it instead does is it's conservative, it generates functionally correct code, and it just uses an idiv instruction. Right, so you don't always get you know strength reduction. A lot of times it depends on you know the context that your compiler has. So that's going to go ahead and do it for this episode. A brief introduction to this compiler optimization called strength reduction. As always, you can check out any of my code for any of my other series at GitHub.com/coffeebeforearch. But that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.